My name is Ben Newman, I'm an illustrator, and I'm the shape of a potato. When you spend quite a long time working on, on digital work, like I'll, I'll draw things by hand and then work them up through, through the computer, but the computer is a process, not as a, as a means to an end. The idea of just pressing Apple Z and you can undo any mistake. Um, I quite like when I paint is to make certain conditions for myself where uh, I can't control the mistakes and actually the mistakes become a part of the painting or a part of the image. So uh, when I paint, I, I like to rather than draw onto the wood, I like to sort of scratch into the surface. So when I do make a mistake or have to rearrange something, I can't get rid of that engraved mark. You know, it just becomes a part of the painting. Uh, and I find that by doing the painting work, it can sometimes quite often feed into maybe some of the work that I'm working on on the computer and, and vice versa. So they're all part of the same process, really. So this is, this is the main book, this is the one about space, the first one we did, the Frontiers of Space. So it's written by my friend Dr. Dominic Wallyman, he's a doctor of physics and he works in Canada actually currently uh, on quantum computers. And children's books. And children's books as well in his spare time. When I started to do AstroCat, AstroCat was like a byproduct of working in a bookshop for about five or six years and it was taking people to the non-fiction section. Like the fiction sections in bookshops for children are fantastic. They're so creative and so varied. But uh, I found that the non-fiction, the sort of science part of things, was a little bit kind of unloved, and there wasn't always a lot of variety there. And I found that with a lot of the space books, uh, they were quite often sort of annotated photographs, and I felt like they'd lost a little bit of that sense of wonder that we had in space books for children in the sort of 50s and early 60s. So I sort of wanted to try and come back to that and take what we have as modern information now and marry that with no photographs, just you know, simple colour, shapes and characters to kind of try and bring it to, to life some more. But it's about making the book a beautiful object. You know, it, it, it's about making things that aren't disposable, things that can be treasured or kept. You know, when people are clearing out their books, they come across it like, actually, do you know what, we're not going to throw that one we're not going to take that one to the charity shop we want to keep hold of it it only enhances the sort of visual quality of the book I spent a long time working on the Professor Astro Cat book working on other projects where I'm illustrating you know information I'm, I'm communicating visually but with the paintings the paintings are, are just they're just nonsense they're just things that I just want to get out of my head for no real reason or, or anything like that they're just things that I, I feel quite compelled to make I've been quite lucky that I've got to travel quite a lot um, just just from drawing and wherever I go places I always like to pick up sort of old toys or just strange knickknacks when I was a kid you know I, I loved toys I always wanted toys I don't think that's a particularly uncommon aspect of childhood but I just don't think I ever really grew out of it I just like odd objects I like it if the arms a bit broken or you know the faces the heads a bit chewed you know I like them to be a little bit dog-eared and, and have this sort of character to them there's something very beautiful about about a sort of loved child's toy um, which I, I don't I don't really like the toy if it's in good condition you know, I want it to sort of seen a bit of, of wear and tear I used to do a lot of BAM posters when I first started out. Some of the first work I ever did digitally was to produce these animated backdrops for a band called Safety Word. I loved going along and taking part just as a spectator that I kind of wanted to be able to sort of get involved, try and be useful basically. Um, so I thought by being, by being useful I could, I could make posters for people. That's not actually Star Wars oh, and other space themes. <laughs> Music is, is a really important part. I mean, I'm, I'm in a room working all day and I don't have a boss to tell me what I can and cannot listen to. So I think having that privilege almost makes you feel incredibly wealthy, not necessarily in money, but in, in being able to, to do what you want to do. And yeah, I listen to music all the time. You know, I listen to things from very slow, heavy metal. <laughs> 
into a quite sort of frantic, twiddly... <laughs> ...to blues. Yeah, all sorts, really. Uh, I quite like a variation, because I, I, I feel like, as a human being, you have peaks and troughs in the day, and uh, I know just the right music to put on to kind of lift myself back up and keep a sort of steady stream of work. One of the times I really remember um, being so excited as a child, I was on holiday um, down in Cornwall with my parents and there was this little corner shop that just sold sort of sweets and sticks of rock and things. They got really, I just was really excited to go in there because they had this little stand full of American comics. And American comics were so hard to find when I was a kid. So if you found them, it was like, it was just like diamonds. You know, they were all printed on sort of uncoated paper. Sometimes the registration was off. I wouldn't even understand all of the words. I just wanted to look at the pictures. That sort of colour, that sort of saturated colour on paper that I really vividly remember as a child. American comics were a bit like the sort of holy grail for me. They were this sort of exotic import that you only occasionally found. They weren't in every single shop, only in some. And you almost would only stumble on them by complete accident. That really resonated with me as a kid. I want, it made me want to draw comics, it made me want to draw creatures or characters, um, and I just didn't grow out of it. Now I'm a man in my almost mid-30s that draws cats for a living. 